I thought maybe we could have a discussion and sort of clarify how intellectual property works because believe it or not, it does not work this way. And I do not think that Teo Janssen has intellectual property protection on the elements of the strand based and leg design and all that that Last Oasis has used. This is a community supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So first let's look at two videos. We're gonna look at a game trailer and then we're gonna look at uh, an artist's work. So uh, there's no sound accompanying this on purpose because I wanted to have a discussion on top of the, the video. So what you're looking at here is the game trailer, one of the game trailers for Last Oasis a sort of first person like ship battle game where your ships now are land ships instead of sea ships. And this is still a game that's in development. I don't believe I have a release date on this one, um, but it's got a really unique style to it. These massive land ships with these very unique looking like legs and walking mechanism and you, you board the ships and you fight, but I don't really care about that too much. I care about whether you have more of these land ships. It's got building mechanics, you get base building and all that, and then you go and fight and war with your land ships. And so everybody sort of has an idea of what these land ships look like. Now, there's only a couple land ships in this trailer. I see like one big one, uh, one small one, and they've all got this interesting looking leg design. And if, you, if you've seen this leg design before and you know what it is, you know where I'm going with this. So then, uh, I don't want to commit too much copyright infringement here, so I, I just want to show the different designs here. This is, I don't know if this is a strand-based. Strand-based. Strand-based by Dutch <laughs> wind sculptor Theo Janssen. And that's him there. And he makes these sculptures which have this really unique walking mechanism. They're often wind powered or at least meant to be wind powered. Some of them, some of them don't work. He, he definitely has lots of trial and error with his designs. And he makes these very interesting sculptures. And doesn't that look an awful lot like this? I mean, that they're seriously, they are definitely similar. I cannot deny that there is similarity between that and that. And then the question becomes, are, are they substantially similar? And is there an underlying copyright? And does Teo Janssen have some kind of copyright claim? Well, a YouTuber, I, I forget the, the YouTuber's name, uh, the channel's name, but we can put a, a link in the description below. We can put a description in the link below. And he put out two videos questioning the copyright ability of Last Oasis, or at least questioning whether they will have copyright problems in the future. And he reached out to Teo Janssen, who was unaware that this game was similar with the, the leg design and all that. And the YouTube creator went into a lot of accusations that the developers of Last Oasis were going to have all sorts of copyright problems since they didn't clear the copyrights. And there was also trademarks mentioned that maybe Teo Janssen has some kind of trademark on the strand based and that leg design and all that. And of course, I brought up patent as well. So I thought maybe we could have a discussion and sort of clarify how intellectual property works because believe it or not, it does not work this way, and I do not think that Teo Janssen has intellectual property protection, as in a copyright or trademark or patent, on the elements of the strand-based and leg design and all that that Last Oasis has used. Yes, I think he has copyrights and trademarks. He could possibly patent something. I'm not sure about that. We brought Blackleaf along today for that. And... I don't think that Last Oasis has infringed on it. So let's go through the different kinds of intellectual property protection that might cover something like these strand beast legs. So I've reverted back to my English pronunciation of it, sorry. So first, could it be a copyrightable thing? Well, not really. Copyright protects 
the expression of an idea, that's true. And certainly these legs are fixed in a tangible medium. I don't know if it's a tangible medium of expression, but I, I actually don't need to get to that that distinction because it's already been decided a hundred times over that things that are functional or have useful purpose or use utilitarian purpose are not protected by copyright law. They are protected by patent law. And so if a person wants to protect a useful or functional item, they apply for a patent. And if they instead try to use copyright, they might find their copyright quickly invalidated or challenged, and they would lose such a challenge over a purely functional or utilitarian item. Well, let's take a close look here at Theo Janssen's strand based. This looks very functional. Almost every single piece of this thing looks incredibly functional. It's, it's sort of a intersection of design and functionality. And it seems like the functionality part comes first. It seems like he needs the thing to be functional and he's figuring out how to make these designs, these functional designs also into different shapes and things. So there would be some copyright protection in that overall shape and thing that I'm talking about, which is basically the non-functional design, does Teo Janssen need to have the thing be wide or tall or long in order for it to work? No. Does it need to have three flags on it versus two flags on it? No. He can probably make it with a small one or a big one or whatever any way he wants. The walking mechanism needs to be of a certain geometry. That's the functional part. Then when he combines walking mechanisms along a camshaft and gives it some functional stability so that it doesn't, you know, so that it has something to leverage against and then adds fans or flags to give it some pressure to move, all of that's functional. Maybe where he chooses to put those things and how he chooses, you know, did he put uh, a city make his camshaft six feet or ten feet or whatever that might not be functional maybe he can make it skinny or short or or long or or now whatever that part the, his choices there are protectable because they're non-functional other than that there's nothing in here this is he doesn't have a painted design on the thing it, it isn't you know a, a special pattern or something like that everything on here is basically functional so that would mean getting a patent. And I looked up Teo Janssen, he's a unique name. I looked up his name and his patents, and you can look up what he has patented in the United States. We're talking about the United States here. I don't know what he's patented in uh, Netherlands, but, and, and I don't even know where he lives. I'm assuming since you told me he's Dutch, he lives in Netherlands, but. Yeah, Schrevelinger. Okay, so <laughs> he could apply for a patent. I don't actually know, it's why Blackleaf is here, but he has not, as far as I can tell, applied for a patent in the U.S. on this. Now, Blackleaf, so far from what you've seen, have you formed an opinion as to whether this is patentable or not? Well, for patent, of course, you have to apply for it. Unlike trademark or copyright, it's not something that exists from the moment of creation. So right off, so, right out of the gate, if he didn't apply for a patent, no, no patent protection. Yep. Okay, so, that's so the, that's that aside, let's just forget about that for a moment would the design be patentable or what would be the requirements for this design or I don't even know am I using the right words design utility what are the words here yeah. for this so there's three different kinds of patents there's patents for plants as in the things that grow from the ground okay um, but there's very few of them that are granted and not relevant to our issue like GMOs uh, yeah okay if you're Mons if you're Monsanto you're interested otherwise probably not so much um, and then there is utility which protects how something works and there's design, which protects how it's aesthetics of if the thing. So we covered the case with the guitars, I believe, last week, Okay. which was design. Because what does a guitar look like? Well, it can look like pretty much anything, especially if it's an electronic guitar. So the utility of it is how it makes the noise, which is the electronic boards. The design is how does it look? And so for this guy, if I'm thinking utility patent, I'm thinking about the mechanisms of how it does the walking, how the thing is 
made to walk. And as you said, he's gone through trial and error, ex experimentation, which sounds very utilitarian. So there may be aspects of the joint design or the ligatures or other aspects that would be utility patent that he could get uh, protection for those. Then design would be, you can change how it looks into its specific way that it looks. And it's obviously a useful article because it does a useful thing. So the particular aesthetic of it could uh, be protective. And then you get into the question of, can you infringe the utility patent or the design patent based on a virtual representation like in a computer game? And the closest case on point that I'm aware of is a case called PS Products versus Activision Blizzard, which dealt with the design patent, um, which said that a type of stun gun was found to be an infringement relative to one in a video game. But there's not much case law on it because it's not a situation that's come up very much. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a situation with a utility patent with a virtual representation. Um, so he could be the first. It would be entertaining. Uh, but yeah, that's where the law stands today. So how about the design or utility of the legs themselves? That seems awfully mathematical to me. How, how much of a patent can you get for finding or discovering sort of a natural mathematical operation or intersection? In other words, these these legs have to be of a particular relationship. The, 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 the different segments have to be of a particular ratio Otherwise, they won't walk properly. So it, it's not necessarily that Teo Janssen has designed a new iPhone or new circuit or new chip or something like that. I've obviously very specific example on my part. I don't mean to pigeonhole an artist. Um, he's designed what looks to me like wind sculptures around a mathematical uh, operation. So how patentable is it when you find sort of a natural mathematical operation like that? And am I on the right track there? Sure. You can't patent a law of nature, so you can't patent the math itself, but you can patent a particular application of math. Okay. And the, the best case on point is Diamond v. Chakabardi, which dealt with the curing of rubber. And if you cure rubber according to a certain method of its current temperature and time, and there's a, an equation that pops out at the end, then you know exactly how long to keep the rubber cooking to be at the right consistency. Okay. And obviously there's a mathematical equation to do that, but because it produces that useful result, the cured rubber at the end, you're, you're good to go. And uh, even more basic than that, like you think about gears and gear ratios, I mean, obviously there's math built into that, but as long as you're doing it for some sort of, this would be mechanical pattern, clearly, it's, it's a mechanism and work. So I don't think there's a problem with a mathematical issue. It's, it's reduced to a mechanical thing. So even if there's math embedded in it, it's fine. So you think, so what is your conclusion then? Do you think he would be able to apply for a patent? Uh, I guess it's a bunch of assumptions in there because we don't know about prior art and, and anyone's previous work with this, with these kinds of legs. Maybe Teo Janssen is not the first person to come up with this kind of design. He's just the first person to become famous for making these wind sculptures using this design. Uh, what do you think? Well, the, the big thing that's going to be a problem is if it's been in use or known for more than one year, then he's statutorily barred. So you have a, you have a ticking clock. Okay, so this is, he's, been he's been making doing this these for more than a year, then he can't get a patent years. now. Yeah, he's yeah, been so doing this not, for 30 years. Not so much years. now. Okay, I don't know if he so, could have gotten a patent then. But. So ultimately, there isn't a patent, and maybe he could have gotten a patent all the way back then, but not now. Yeah, that's over now. That's over now. Okay. So then moving on to trademark, um, trademark protects branding. If he's selling his art, which many artists do to support themselves, if he's selling his art or selling photos of his art or whatever, he gets to use the shape of his creations as a trademark or, or et cetera, et cetera. And as he's using that shape and all that, then yeah, the shape of the thing has a sort of trademark protection from others using the same trademark. But I don't really see him using the design of the legs as a trademark. And these land ships in Last Oasis, they look completely different aside from the wavy flags and the legs. They otherwise look completely different from Teo Janssen's sculptures. And if you take any one of the sculptures as a whole, not just looking at the legs, 
the sculpture is definitely different enough to me that it's not substantially similar. But ultimately, it would come to a question of jury on the on the substantially similar question, which is the copyright question. Substantially similar is copyright, not trademark. Trademark is confusingly similar. So I don't, I'm not sure that we have a trademark issue here. I don't know exactly how Theo Janssen markets himself, but let's assume that he that he markets himself using the strand bastes. Then he would have some kind of trademark protection there. So. Last Oasis, their developers would do well to consult with their attorneys. I'm sure they've already done this, but consult with their attorneys about uh, whether Theo Janssen has any trademark protection that they need to worry about. Because if his designs are trademarked and the in-game design is too close, maybe that's a trademark issue. But what about the legs? The legs are obviously really, really similar. I would say confusingly similar. If I went and and bought, you know, if I knew Teo Janssen's work and then saw this game, very much like Upper Echelon Gaming, I would go, huh, that's Teo Janssen's design. Well, trademarks also cannot protect functional items. So that means that Teo Janssen can use, again, the non-functional sort of overall shape of the design, but the legs themselves being as functional as they are, and even the wind sails being as functional as they are, probably can't be trademarked. There's a more or less famous trademark case where a construction supply company made those uh, those diamond-shaped orange warning signs that you see as you're approaching a construction zone. You know, they'll put out temporary ones. You see the big ones on posts, but then the 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 temporary ones are on on the ground on a stand well the wind blows and maybe maybe the maybe you'd rather have the wind you know blow around the stand than blow the stand over so you might put a spring on the bottom of the stand and then when the wind blows the stand you know swings down and swings back up like my like my chicken hat here you know, <laughs> down and back up down and back up um, rather than the down and back up uh, rather than the stand falling over well that went to the trade went to the uspto and it was challenged as being functional and the uspto said that or the trademark trial and appeals board said that the functional nature of the item means that it's not trademarkable and so anybody can make a uh, work zone sign with a with a um, spring on the bottom of it unless that company held a patent to that design it's not copyrightable and it's not trademarkable. So it, it, my conclusion here is that Teo Janssen does not have any intellectual property protection on which Last Oasis is infringing. Uh, but I'm but reasonable people can disagree on this. Certainly there's there's some some room for disagreement here. Uh, Blackleaf, what do you think? Have you come to a conclusion? Do you think that the short segments of the game that I showed you those designs are infringing on anything Teo Janssen owns? I'm going to say no. I don't think so. I think your analysis is right on the money. Yeah. It's useful. All the stuff is useful. That's the real problem. And even if he did have protection, which he doesn't, the case law is so thin that it's, yeah, no. Yeah, now let me be clear. Teo Janssen's work is amazing and is very hard work and he's very dedicated and he is an extremely accomplished and should be recognized worldwide as an accomplished artist. I'm not trying to minimize in any way Teo Janssen's work. It's the legal question of does that work translate into intellectual property protection on which a video game called Last Oasis is infringing, and I say no. But like I said, reasonable people can disagree. Maybe they should give credit to Teo Janssen for inspiring their work was one of the, the arguments that upper, upper Echelon Gaming made. And it's a perfectly reasonable argument, but the lawyer in me immediately cried foul and said, no, don't do that. That could be used against you in a court of law. <laughs> that could be access plus substantial similarity. So if it turns out that something is copyrighted, well, now you've just given away the access problem. So while we you know, theoretically think and hypothetically think that there's nothing that there's that's being infringed here. 
this is just our sideline quarterbacking, our armchair lawyering here, okay? I mean, I'm literally sitting here in a chair with arms. Like, you know, so this is this is not a final legal analysis that anyone should rely on. Last Oasis should talk to their lawyers and Teo Janssen should talk to his lawyers. And those lawyers will be responsible for what they say to their clients, respectively, as fiduciaries, which I am not. So we're just saying that we don't see anything here that, that we think infringes on Teo Janssen's intellectual property, whatever that is that he owns. I, I think that, because I can look at um, the last oasis and I can be like oh yeah they were probably inspired but taking inspiration from or taking components of something but not the whole like sometimes that's not copyright infringement and so ethically morally we can be like well you know they definitely took from his work but in terms of legal protections just being inspired by something yeah is is not always enough so just for example, looking at these strand beasts here uh, in Last Oasis, uh, here I did it, I called them strand beasts. Um, looking at these land ships in Last Oasis and then looking at Teo Janssen's strand beast here, that this is obviously a very different sculpture mm -hmm. than the one in Last Oasis. Now, we have to do that for every single one of them. Is it possible for Last Oasis to put a land ship in the game so close to a Teo Janssen sculpture that it is copyright infringement? Absolutely yes, but it's going to be on that overall design, not on any one leg design or something like that. Because again, the legs are using a functional uh, sort of mathematical operation that Blackleaf did say might have been able to be patented many years ago, but since it has been out in public for so long, makes it automatically not patentable. So it's not like someone could get a patent for this design now, which means there's very little intellectual property protection other than the overall design, like the overall look and design of any one sculpture. So let us know what you think about that. Reasonable people can disagree. So please don't get too upset with each other in the comments. This one's pretty on the line and I just happened to fall towards one side and I thought you'd find that interesting. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a, a, a massively precedential case that changes all of our opinions. It could be. You know? It could be. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that this one is going to be involving any any novel concepts of law that that that, yeah. that you know makes sense to think. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's uh, could always happen. I might be trying some sort of um, publicity theory or uh, or false association theory or unjust enrichment theory. Not that I think that any of those are going to fly either, but. I think they're probably better than the IP case. Just one quick question, especially since we still have Blackleaf. I quickly tried to do some Googling to see if there was any patents in it in Europe. And I did find one pattern, not the exact design. It's combined with a bicycle and it is partly patented on Thier Janssen's his pattern. But it seems to be only patented in Germany. So how much okay. would it uphold in America if it's patented in Europe and not... Yeah, and I'm not even sure how it Zero. would trans translate Zero. then if, so let's say Last Oasis is being sold in Germany. I don't mm. even think that, that a video game that happens to make use of the visual depiction of a patented item, is that automatically in, I don't even know if that infringes on something. Mm. That's, a, that's a tough one. That is our show. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This has been the July 14th episode of Lawful Masses. And you, of course, are my lawful masses. And as we've discussed, since it's Sunday, this is sort of like a mass, like a, like a priest is delivering like a sermon, and this sermon is about the law. So they're also those lawful masses. Thank you to our patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.org slash law supporters who support us financially and make these stories possible. Thank you to Joshua Davis, who is supporting us in July at the $500 level. We're going to make a video for Joshua about the Tanda Pay service that he has developed. It is a social insurance program that is based on the blockchain, and we're going to see what's super interesting about this. Thank you very much to our $50 plus supporters, Jonathan Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie. I almost said it. I almost said Andy. 
Yeah. Michael Pierce, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Gray, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wazatsky. Thank you very much for your support at the $50 level. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters, including Joe Tyson, who I forgot about, so I'm making it up to him, who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me and will be in the description of the videos that drop. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This has been Kaylee with us here in the studio. Brandon and Tactical and Kurt Mueller have been in the virtual studio. Thank you very much for joining us there. I'll leave some room here for the editor to put some dog video, but here is also a dog for you. Hop. Good boy. Good boy, that's my dog. <laughs> this is Nico. Nico has also been in the studio today. Up, oh, up, oh. and I an hear Ilsa? an Ilsa. I hear an Ilsa. Ilsa. Do we have an Ilsa coming over? But you can't see her on the, on the camera. That's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, thank you very much for joining me. It's been a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you on Wednesday, and uh, that's it. Love you all. Bye.